Hallelujah. Been an old song on my mind this afternoon. I don't remember all the words to it. I tried to Google them a while ago. And uh, started pulling up nutty stuff, so. Says, Lord, you know I need a brand new touch. My strength from yesterday has gone. If you'll give me, Lord, just another touch, I'll have the strength to carry on. I feel like the Lord's given me a revelation even for my own life tonight. Yeah, it is, but I didn't have one. I ain't singing it anyway. I'm tired of getting made fun of. Put me out of my misery. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> I feel like the Lord showed me something today. Uh, and uh, Acts chapter 3, verse number 18, verse number 19. Um, good to see everybody. We missed some of you this morning. Glad you're back tonight. Hallelujah. Feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. I felt it right at the very beginning. I felt it continuously. Amen. If you want the Holy Ghost, you don't have to wait till a certain time and then come down and beg for it. You just receive it. And when the Holy Ghost is moving, that's a good time to receive it. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. But those things he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I want to speak to you for just a few minutes tonight on this subject. And I promise you, I got all the deep stuff out of me this morning, I think. Uh, if, I, if I thought I could have got away with it, <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have hired Brother Damesworth to come and play the piano for a minute, honey, and make everybody shout. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a running joke we used to have at the boys ranch he'd say if you ain't got nothing good to preach tonight I'll make them shout I said oh, well <laughs> it's just it's just kind of a funny thing but uh, uh, this morning I, I feel like what we shared with you this morning is uh, uh uh, just going to flow right into tonight. And uh, I want to preach to you on the subject of there's no expiration date. No expiration date on your experience with God. No expiration date. Dear Lord Jesus, I love you. I thank you for this word you've given me. Thank you for your spirit that we felt here tonight. I indeed have felt the power of the Holy Ghost moving in this place. It's been a good day, Lord, and the flesh is indeed weary, but that's part of it. But the spirit's not affected. It's not afflicted. It's not hurt. It's not let down. I pray, God, that we can receive this word tonight and that we'll get stronger in you and that we'll begin to see that things happen that you want to happen, God. That's what we're all about. Put the word in us. Invest in us, God, and let it begin to grow and bring forth fruit that's pleasing to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You can be seated. The Bible is replete with prophecies, both from the Old Testament unto the New Testament, and the Old Testament and the New Testament unto today, all the way up through the end of time. You'll find passages of Scripture that give prophetic uh, utterances that have been fulfilled throughout the Bible, and then some of them are being fulfilled today, and then some of them will be yet fulfilled before the Lord comes. And, and the prophecies regarding Jesus Christ and the work that he should accomplish, they were all completed. They were all done. That, that's why that he cried on the cross, it is finished. He had completed his work. He had done everything he could do. He bowed his head. He gave up the ghost. Uh, the mission of the man Christ Jesus was complete with regard to the atoning work for us. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says for he hath made him to be 
be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are made righteous not solely by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ but by our faith in the redeeming power of his death, burial, and resurrection and the acknowledgement that it is effective not only for you but it's effective for me. It's effective for whosoever will. He became sin who knew no sin that we might be made righteous in him. Romans 5.19 says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. Of course, referring to Adam and referring to the obedience at the, the garden that I spoke of this morning. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Sin was introduced by a man and came upon all men. So was righteousness introduced by one man, the living word, Jesus Christ. And by his obedience we are made or we become or we are molded. We are shaped uh, righteous. Uh, I don't know about you, but it excites me to know that my righteousness in the eyes of God has little or nothing to do with me, uh, but I've just got to keep my faith strong in Him. Uh, I am made righteous in Him. Uh, I am made complete in Him. Everything I hope to be, long to be, should be, could be, I will find in Jesus Christ. Look here. Titus 3 and 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us uh, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, i got to let you know something tonight. Uh, we, uh, we, The reason why that we worship, the reason why that we're demonstrative, that song always speaks to me and, and some people respond and some don't. Uh, but when I think about the overflow uh, of a forgiven soul... Uh, I know what the Lord has forgiven me of. I know the sins I committed that he washed away. That's why I cannot help but praise him and lift my hands and jump up and down sometimes and sometimes just holler real loud because there's no words that can describe the true relief at knowing that my sins are under the blood. From the babe of Bethlehem's manger to a 12-year-old boy wise beyond his years to being raised in Nazareth, the son of a carpenter, the choosing of 12 disciples, one who would end up betraying him, living on the Sea of Galilee, and the list could go on and on and on, right down to riding a little donkey into the street and they laying down palm branches and coats. Everything the prophets prophesied of Jesus did and everything Jesus did was pointing, was pointing toward the outpouring and the continued renewal of the Holy Ghost. Without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Calvary was for nothing. Without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the ark was for nothing. Without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, David and Goliath was for nothing. They're good stories and they're good illustrations, but everything in the book was leading up to and culminating with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon mankind. First Peter 1, 10, 11, and 12 says, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, and so on. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what? Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand prophetically of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. And the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed, those guys that prophesied it, that not unto them, they didn't get it. Hebrews chapter 11 says, but God hath providing some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. We are living in the generation that is the ultimate fulfillment of every prophecy about Jesus. Christ and it all comes down to balls down to rolls up and stops with the baptism of the Holy Ghost the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you that's the disciples and the apostles who have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into with the receiving and the baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, 
This is not pie in the sky preaching. This is just truth. With the, with the infilling of the Holy Ghost, we are in fact, according to Scripture, a new creature. A new creature designed to grow up into a perfect or mature, fully functioning part of the body. I thought of it today. I don't understand it. I can't comprehend how people can have an experience with God and then walk away while they're still a baby before they fully comprehend and grasp the hold of the fullness of what God has. Uh, you feel like that they've cheated themselves, in fact, uh, because they could not get roots. But the Bible says uh, that the Word of God will operate that way. It goes without saying that the Holy Ghost will too. Uh, if it doesn't get a chance to take root uh, and build up on the foundation, uh, they will walk away. Uh, and they too, Brother David, and will have a story to write someday about the perils of walking away from God lost and as the old timer said undone and without God you cannot grow you, I'm going to mess around and feel the Holy Ghost and that ain't supposed to be happening right now Man, i got to hurry up and get done so everybody can get where they're going. But I feel I've got something in the Spirit, Brother David. I've got a word in the Spirit that you're not going to accomplish what you are. You can have good ideas. We can have good classes. We can have all kinds of things get together. But it's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. If we're going to get anywhere, if we're going to go anywhere, if we're going to become anything, it will be because of the Holy Ghost. And you cannot, you or I cannot accomplish anything without the renewing of the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to hold you long tonight, but I want you to think about some things here. Notice this. Brother Billy, when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter number 2, beginning I believe about verse number 14 through verse number 40 or something like that, Brother Billy Peter had only just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost himself just a little bit ago. Same day. Same day. And he preached a message of, of salvation by way of the cross. Same thing we've got to preach. This same Jesus. God has made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, just as it happened to him, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and unto your children, and to all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying unto them, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Boom. There it is. From a new convert for those that desire it. It doesn't matter that Peter was with Jesus Christ for so long and the scriptures would begin to be fulfilled. Peter was in fact a new convert himself and I think it's fair to say and I can prove it to you by scripture, Brother Robbie, that Peter did not still yet have it all together. There was still some things God needed to do in Peter. Though he had the truth and he had the message and he had what it was going to take, it still takes repentance. Water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. We ain't been baptizing enough people lately. We ain't been having enough people repent lately. We ain't been having enough people get the Holy Ghost lately. It's still the way to make it to heaven. You better tell somebody. You better talk to somebody. You better share the gospel because Jesus is coming. And the only way to see the kingdom of heaven is to be born again. Peter preaching that message. Again, I don't know sometimes if we grasp, we read, we read the Bible so objectively or unobjectively we just read it as it is and, and we think about all this cool stuff they said and we don't know what's going on in their minds and we don't understand the dynamic of, 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 of their feelings and their emotions because they were people just like us the Bible spoke of Elijah being a man of like passion such as us Paul was the chiefest of sinners by the grace of God Peter was what he was and, and all of those they were people just like us they had bad days they got in bad moods 
news. They weren't feeling good all the time. And Peter, he is just a few days, just a few days, less than two months removed from a very public sin that made an impact on several people. He was in no way the mature preacher of the gospel who according to history was to be crucified upside down as a testament of his unworthiness to be crucified as Jesus was. He was in a manner of speaking a new convert. And we see clearly in Acts chapter number 10 that there was still a lot of work to be done. Why is that? Peter, listen to me right now. Peter was a Holy Ghost filled, prejudiced Jew. Say, well, I thought... I thought when you got the Holy Ghost, you became a new creature. You do, in fact, Brother Terry. But the, the, uh, the characteristics of that new creation, of that new creature, is as you learn new things, you grow in a different way. Peter was still prejudiced. Against all Gentiles. That's you and I. That means uh, if we were to run into Peter before Acts chapter number 10, there's a very good chance, Sister Manning, that he would not have shared the gospel with us. There was still a lot of work to be done in Peter's life. God had to reveal to him on the rooftop of Simon the Tanner's house in Joppa of his desire to reach the world, all the world, even people that didn't look and believe like Peter did. And he had to do it by way of a heavenly vision. I wondered today, Brother David, why the Lord didn't just send somebody into Peter's life to tell him. And I realized, recognized Peter needed to find it out from God. Now in Acts chapter number 3, he has in fact grown from Acts chapter number 2. It's not just a, a day or two, but it's a matter of several days have passed. And he has grown from Acts 2. And anybody that's had the Holy Ghost any length of time at all will tell you that there's a time when the emotional high of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost indeed wears off. And life punches you in the mouth. And, and you wake up someday and you're hoarse and got the croup. Or you go look at your pocketbook and realize there ain't as much money in there as you thought. And you see the light bill. And you realize that it's been 98 degrees for the last 12 days. And I don't hang gonna have as much money as I thought. And, and before you know it, you have a question so much of your walk with God with emotions that you begin to let your lip drop, droop and realize, well, it ain't no different living. Come on now. That's because, that's why receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues is so important. It's because there may be a time, there has been a time in my life when I've had to go back to that spot and I've had to remind the enemy and most of all, I've had to remind myself uh, right here is where it happened at. Uh, when the Spirit of the Lord lifted my head, uh, when the power of God was manifest in my life uh, and I spoke in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance uh, and I may be not feeling the best in the world right now, but I can tell you right now, I've got something inside of me that if I just keep holding on, tomorrow's going to be a better day. I've got something inside of me that promised me that someday I I get to be with Jesus and this is going to be worth it all. Now in Acts chapter number 3, Peter's message has grown from Acts chapter number 2. And I think it's fair to say, Brother Pete, that, that Peter's description of the very same occurrence because every time Peter preached and they got the Holy Ghost, it was just like it was in the beginning. Because there was a reason why Peter didn't preach it in Acts chapter number 2, in Acts chapter number 8, in Acts chapter number 10. Even though Acts chapter number 8, they, they got baptized in Jesus' name, they didn't let them get the Holy Ghost until Peter and them came along and laid hands on them. Peter was a connection from Acts 2, Acts chapter number 8, Acts chapter number 10. Peter was the connection. And uh, the reason is that he was the one in Matthew 16. The Lord said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So the Jews, the Samaritans, which were the crossbreeds, that was kind of the bridge you went over, and the Gentiles all received the message. Every race and tribe of people in the world that's represented by that all received the initial message of salvation through the lips of Simon Peter. And his description of the same occurrence and the outpouring has evolved to some degree. 
as he is no longer just dealing with the initial outpouring of the Holy Ghost, but recognizing through experience, no doubt, that this baptism of the Holy Ghost came with an addendum. Not only did it change you, not only did it change you, but it keeps you changed. And when you're running dry, there's a time of refreshing that will come from the presence of the Lord that is the same tonight as it was back then. And 2,000 years later, we cannot settle for less than the best. This Holy Ghost does not come with an expiration date. It don't need to be handled carefully. It don't need to be, you know, treated like some precious thing that you put on a shelf somewhere and you look at it. It needs to be used every day of our lives. We need to get a hold of this experience in the morning, tomorrow morning. If you will pray till you talk in tongues tomorrow, your whole day will be changed. Oh, I just felt like I hit kind of a clunky thing. Peter now has done been through some trials. He's done been through some, some, some not good days. He's done realize that this emotional high, and, and that there is an emotional aspect of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And sometimes it wears off. And that's when your faith kicks in and you realize what I've got, what I have, it's going to keep me. With that knowledge comes a responsibility to elevate our expectations of the Spirit working in us. If I don't have the strength I need today, there's only one place I'm going to get it. I'm telling you someone, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the first time, September the 28th, 1982. 33 years ago, I was first filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost at age number nine. And for quite a number of years, through ignorance and through being a child, and and I used to feel bad about this until I read that Brother David Bernard did the same thing. Uh, Brother David, uh, I, I was still living off that experience. And I found myself being weak and being stupid. As a result of being weak so many times, I thought about one of the songs talk about the mercy of God. I promise you before God, I feel like I've used up way more than my share of mercy. I'm off on somebody else's. That's right. But we have got to elevate our expectations of what the Holy Ghost can do in our lives. I'm reminded, and please don't think me being ugly. But I'm thinking about two Sunday nights ago when our young people came home from Youth Congress and they were fired up and they were hopping and popping and running and blowing and going and and you could feel the electricity. And I got to tell you, I wish I could tell you that that was all a result of the Holy Ghost, but it wasn't. It was a result of elevated faith in what the Holy Ghost could do. And if we would get that elevated faith every time we come together, we would have an experience like that. We have got to elevate our expectations of the Spirit of God. If I don't have the strength I need today, let me get in a corner somewhere. Let me get in a hiding place somewhere. If I'm at work, let me go lock myself in the bathroom and let me get a hold of God and pray through to the Holy Ghost. And then I'll deal with this problem. You just wait till I get another dose of refreshing. You just wait till I get another dose of refreshing. I'm getting stronger, not weaker. Can I tell you that with this revelation, with this explanation, with this application in our lives, you will in fact become stronger. You will become stronger in your walk with God as you elevate what is expected of the Spirit working in you. Don't sell God short. Don't cheat yourself out of living a victorious life. Yes, you're going to have problems. The Bible does not say the Holy Ghost will take away our problems. But it does tell about changing the way we look at our problems. 
I'm not getting weaker, I'm getting stronger. It's all about the Spirit of God. It's all about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And people get discouraged when they go through a trial. God have mercy, let's encourage them. They think they're the only one that's having battle with that. The only one get to get the victory over that. Uh, you start having a whole bunch of folks get the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of folks fighting a whole lot of different battles. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, uh, if I keep holding on, I'm going to win. Amen. Because no longer, listen to me right now. Sister Leanne, no longer am I fighting by myself. No longer. I've got something that the world didn't give me and the world can't take it away. I've got something that come. I feel the Holy Ghost walking up in this place right now. I've got something uh, that exploded into this world uh, from heaven. There is nothing earthly or carnal that can hinder or affect it uh, if my faith is just in God. Uh, and I've taught us a few services ago, I don't need to even have a whole lot of faith. Uh, I just need to use the faith that I got uh, in the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and watch what God does in my life. Uh, we have got to stop selling ourselves short uh, and feel like like, well, it's just my lot in life to have all these problems. It's just my lot in life to be pitiful. I just got to hold on. The truth of the matter is, it's not. God's wanting to do a work, and he's wanting to do it in your life, but he's going to use the same spirit to do it in that he's used it in everybody you're looking at. We have got to evolve. We have got to grow. We have got to move forward in our relationship with God and let the Holy Ghost work in our lives. Uh, there is going to be a time. God have mercy on me. I am not in any way. You don't have to be that way. But if you pray through to the Holy Ghost every day, if you talk in tongues every day, I promise you they don't have to be no pumping and priming. They can get up here. Oh, and I'm going to tell you what, fellas. Uh, I absolutely love that song. Y'all could have sang it a few more times. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Uh, it's going to be the Holy Ghost uh, that gives me assurance uh, that I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Uh, it's the Holy Ghost uh, that speaks about heaven that I've got to gain uh, and a hell to shine. Uh, and it puts a little pep uh, in your step uh, and it puts a little jump in you. Listen to me right now. I feel like saying this and I'm coming to a close here in just a minute. My whole voice is about to clunk out on me. We have the exact same spirit that the disciples enjoyed and prospered in. I said we have the exact same spirit that the disciples enjoyed and prospered in. Why is it that I don't have any problems Relating to Peter the dumb bunny that told everybody, listen here, Sister Margaret, that pecker would lie three times in the same night, and the third time, just to prove he really wasn't a disciple, he started cussing when he did it. He lied to some little girl he didn't even know. I don't know him. I don't know him. And blankety blank, beep, 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 blankety blank, I don't know him, just to prove I'm not one of them. We don't have no problems relating to that. So I, oh, well, I, no, you ain't got the cuss to be a sinner. Hang in there with me just a minute. I'm about to close. I feel a little bit bad if y'all get out before the sun goes down. But we don't relate at all to the Peter that stands up and says repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come. From He's on some kind of pedestal. The truth of the matter is, and please don't think I'm belittling who Peter was. I lift him up. I love, I love preaching about Simon Peter, the apostle Peter. But brother Billy, he put his clothes on. If you'll allow me to say it one leg at a time, just like I do. I 
feel like telling you something right now, saints of God. I'm talking to our new people, and I'm talking to our, we, we start to see, we kept a whole lot of our new people. Well, now we start to see them start to slide off just a little bit. It's because they're not building the relationship with God that they need to have. You've got to pray. You've got to fast. You've got to read your Bible. You've got to be faithful to the house of God. And you've got to listen to what the Word says and apply it to your life. Uh, and every opportunity you get, you've got to tell somebody about Jesus. Listen to me now. Listen to me. The same spirit the disciples enjoyed and prospered in is just what we have. I felt like saying this, Brother Billy. I, I don't know why. When we were in Cuba, uh, 